revelations of American military and CIA germ warfare experiments emerged in the public press. Surprisingly, many of those experiments were conducted in U.S. cities and were directed against U.S. citizens. In the 1950s, for example, a germ fog had been sprayed by a Navy ship at San Francisco, according to the Los Angeles Times. In an experiment designed to to determine both attack and defense capabilities of biological weapons, a Navy ship blanketed San Francisco and its neighboring communities with a bacteria-laden fog for six days in 1950, according to U.S. military records. The records contain the conclusion that nearly every one of San Francisco's 800,000 residents was exposed to the cloud released by a Navy ship steaming up and drawn just outside the Golden Gate. The aerosol substance released by the ship contained a bacteria known as serratia, which was believed to be harmless by the military at the time, but which has been found since to cause a type of pneumonia that can be fatal, which sounds like the same similar stuff they're putting in the chemtrails, you know. People have died from these mysterious respiratory illnesses that the doctors claim they don't know, they, they, they know nothing about, they've never seen yet, yeah, right. Um, you know, people go into these upper respiratory infections and stuff from, from chemtrails, obviously, and they're saying, oh, we don't know what this is. We've never seen this before. And the next thing you know, your, your daughter's dead. Same stuff, man. They've been, they've been testing stuff on us and continue to, st- to test stuff on us and have for years. It's never stopped. People act like these, you know, testing stuff on human populations are isolated incidents. It's no isolated, isolated incident. It's an ongoing program. The LA Times added that at least 12 people who were hospitalized around that time for serratia pneumonia, one of them died, and that was just the beginning. The Army Army disclosed that it had conducted 239 open-air tests between 1949 and 1969. Of those, 80 were admitted to have contained actual germs. The tests were directed at Washington, D.C., New York City, Key West, Panama City, Florida, and San Francisco. If we accept the Army's figure of 80 live disease experiments, we discover an average of four germ attacks against U.S. cities every year for 20 years. Other government documents have revealed additional CIA germ warfare experiments carried out in the same manner. This means that every major U.S. city uh, and several major U.S. population areas were under fairly intensive germ bombardment for an admitted 20-year period, all by the nation's own military and intelligence organizations. These germ experiments reportedly ended in 1969, however, justifying suspicions have arisen about sudden outbreaks of more recent diseases, especially those which do not seem to conform to our understanding of epidemiology. First tonight, Spotlight can reveal the Dorset village, which has suffered a series of birth defects, was exposed to enormous quantities of chemicals in 1959. Families in East Lulworth are already demanding a public inquiry into germ warfare tests carried out in the 60s. Now documents show chemicals were dumped by aircraft over Dorset in quantities that were up to a thousand times greater than the rest of the country. Our environment correspondent Simon Hall has this exclusive report. The aim of the airborne tests was the same as those carried out from ships, to examine how vulnerable Britain was to a germ warfare attack. This though is the first time a chemical known to be toxic was used, zinc cadmium sulfide. Scientists say the cadmium is the most worrying component. It is carcinogenic and studies have shown it can cause birth defects in rats. It's unclear if it could have the same effect in humans. Its health effects include damage uh, to the lungs, uh, kidneys and uh, to the liver and uh, also uh, cancer of the lungs and uh, prostate have been uh, found. The test was carried out in August 1959 A plane flew above the North Sea, then along the English Channel, spraying the chemical. Typical numbers of particles detected were 0, 1, 8, 12, and a maximum of 38. But when the plane reached the end of its track, something happened. That resulted in Dorchester sampling 4,315 particles. There was no sample point at East Lulworth, but it lies directly in the chemical's path. The experimental reports give no indication as to why such high levels were recorded at Dorchester. But scientists I've spoken to believe one of two things happened. 
Either something went wrong and a large amount of the chemical was released accidentally, or, being the end of the experiment, the remaining chemical was deliberately discarded. The virus would immunize against this VMAT2 gene, and that would, would have the effect that you see here, which is it's essentially to turn a fanatic into a, a, a normal person. And we think that will have major effects in the Middle East. How would you suggest that this is going to be dispersed? Well, so, so the, the present uh, plan and the tests that we've done so far um, have used uh, uh, respiratory viruses, uh, such as flu or, or uh, rhinoviruses, and uh, we believe that that's a satisfactory way to get the exposure of the largest uh, part of the population. Most of us, of course, have, ha have been exposed to both of those viruses. And, and we're, we're quite confident that, that this will be a, a, a very successful uh, approach. This is fascinating. What's the name of this proposal? Yeah, so, so the name of this project is FunVax, which is the vaccine for religious fundamentalism. And you have a proposal already? The proposal uh, has just been submitted, and I think that the data that I have shown you today would, would support uh, the, the development of, of this project, and we think it has great promise.